And you mentioned both those two places are under persecution. Absolutely. And yet they're they're exploding. The government's not pro Christianity in either no, one. In fact, I read this is a couple years old. I think it was 2017 that in China, 30,000 people a day give their life to Jesus. So I'm only imagining that's increasing. And so I, that's why I'm encouraging pastors. Let's get our eye, like you said, back on Jesus and not mm. on who's running the country. I think we've had a lot of maybe too much focus and too much onus has gone on a uh, human system. And when we realize it, it was great and I'm not I'm not saying it was bad and I'm not I'm you know, I, I get it. I, I enjoyed those four years of pro-religion rhetoric sure. that was coming out of uh, the. So but if it changes, but look at these countries you just mentioned. They're anti-Christianity, but yet the church is exploding because, That's again, right. God responds to the opposite of the day. So yes. when they come against the church, I think the church gets greater. I think the church explodes. We've had people come to our church that came because the government said not to go to church. You ready for that? <laughs> we asked them, well, how did you hear about us? Well, one guy said, I've never been to church <laughs> in my life. He said, but they told me I can't go to church, so I want to check out why they said I couldn't go to church. Maybe Amazing. that could be the greatest thing God is when our country starts to say, don't go to church. And people go, well, wait a minute. Because that's how we're wired. When you were little, your mom said, don't touch the cookies. What'd you do? I'm going to touch the cookies. Government says, don't go to church. People are going to start flooding the churches. Maybe that's the door of the greatest awakening <laughs> is when the government turns against churches. Now, I hope they don't. And I think we're a ways away from that. Yeah, but what I'm yeah, saying so. is, let's not wait. Let's let's move. Because let's let go of things we can't control and realize we're never going to flourish if all we do is wait for something to be over. Boy, that is that, I got people in my life that are telling me, well, it's going to be a rough four years. We'll just wait till the next four years and see if it no, turns. No, no, I'm not oh, waiting. Heaven, no, no. Now the, the harvest is ready. Let's go. Yes. Let's do something great for God because he said those who know me will do great exploits. And I've been declaring that. We're going to see great exploits. I believe signs and wonders are coming back to the house of God. Well, I think, I when, when, I think when these things happen, it clarifies in our minds who we are again. Sometimes when things are muddy and foggy and, and, you know, nothing's defined and clear in our minds, sometimes the church needs that, that headwind, as you're talking about, that airplane, man. He'll, he'll run all the way down to the end of the runway to turn around to come back up against the wind because it's the wind that lifts the airplane off the ground. It's the, it's the, it's the resistance. And I do feel, I mean, personally, I think we are going to see, if not overt, um, resistance to the church. I believe we'll see it in systemic um, resistance to the sure. church. But I believe it's our jobs as, as pastors and leaders to speak against it when we see it and encourage the, the church to say, listen, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' Absolutely. blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. And when all things fail, that is where the clarity and the purpose and the, and the, the point, the focus on that beach at, at Normandy, that's when the church gains its edge because we do better than anything else in the world when they say we can't because God is on our side and if God be for us, nothing can be against us. And that is, boy, that is so true. That is so true.